Hi all, uh, welcome back to a, another uh, edition, I suppose you could call it, of uh, my ham shack. Uh, I was just going to uh, show you a, a quick video on uh, some of the different cables, uh, connectors, uh, how to solder a, a PL259, uh, the different types of uh, connectors that you can uh, use for coax, uh, some of the basic tools that you might need, um, how, to, how to crimp a connector. Uh, solder a, um, a little connector, a little electrical one like this, how to do it properly. Um, and uh, just like to say hi to uh, James 2 Mike 0 uh, Julia Alpha Sierra for uh, commenting on my videos already. Uh, the only one up yesterday, uh, Dimitri and uh, Kilo Delta 8 Delta Hotel Hotel. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the videos and uh, hopefully, there'll be uh, more to come. So, uh, well, let's get on with it, and uh, I'll just spin this round, uh, if you bear with me, two seconds. Okay. Here you can see a selection of uh, cables that I've uh, managed to dig out of the shed. There's uh, quite a few of the different ones, um, but I just wanted to show you a few of them, just to uh, give you a quick heads up. Okay, we'll start with uh, coax type um, connectors. There's, uh, there's many different types that you can uh, get your hands on. This one's uh, 50 ohm uh, RG213. Uh, the only problem with this uh, this particular one is it's uh, I don't know if you can see it very well there. Just uh, take it uh, in the centre there is the uh, is the inner core. That's the uh, I suppose that's like the the live I suppose of the uh, uh, of where the RF comes out, but uh, it also goes down the shield as well, um, sort of makes a loop. Uh, then we've got the uh, got an insulator there to uh, insulate between the the shield and the inner there. And uh, obviously we've got the got the shield along here and uh, the uh, the coating on the outside to protect uh, from water. As you can see, this one here it's a, it's a very very tight weave uh, shield, which is uh, the tighter the better. And I can't even push it up, it's that, uh, it's that stiff. Um, but it, d it does come apart at the ends, like this. There go, there's the uh, the inside. The only problem with uh, having a single in a, in a core is uh, if you if you go past the uh, the bend radius, you can actually break it, and uh, you'll have to replace uh, the whole cable unless you can find out where it is. But without actually cutting through here, um, or using the special equipment, which would be quite expensive. You you won't be able to find out where the break is. Um, so there you go. There's the uh, the RG two on three. Uh, it's better for uh, VHF and up. Uh, you know VHF, UHF, SHF uh, as uh, uh, what's it called? Um, ah, uh, losses are uh, a bit more pungent in uh, these uh, frequency spectrums. Uh, whereas HF isn't too bad, but uh, Obviously, the better the uh, the feeder you've got to your antenna, uh, the better. This one's a, a lot more flexible. It's got a smaller bend radius. Um, it's used in mobile setups in your car. It's uh, it's called uh, RG58U. This is a military spec. Uh, same with uh, this one. here has the uh, the very tight weave. Uh, there you go. You can see that one. It's a bit easier to uh, move around. But this one's uh, different. Because it's uh, it's actually multi-core. It doesn't look like it on the uh, on the video, but uh, it is actually uh, multi-core inside there. So that's that one. Uh, that's also 50 ohms as well. Then we come to this one here. It looks uh, fairly similar. You know, sort of size. There's no writing on it, um, so you've got to be careful with what you use. But this is actually 75 ohm coax for uh, television setups. It's uh, it can be used for uh, ham radio, but uh, personally, I don't recommend it. I know there's a lot of people that do use it, uh, but if you look at the the braid, it's uh, sorry the shield, it's uh, few and far between. You know, it just peels off, comes off in your hand. But this one has a uh, that's also got a multi-core as well. It's not just a, a single cable like the uh, the RG213. Uh, I suppose it'll be okay for listening. But uh, personally, I wouldn't use it myself for uh, transmitting. Uh, there's that one. 
Uh, then there's another one that we've come across. This is called the uh, Cat5 cable. A lot of you might already know what this is. Uh, it's a uh, four paired uh, cable. It's eight, eight core, but uh, the, the paired together. And it's used for uh, your computer. Um, I suppose you could use it for an aerial, I suppose, if uh, dipole or something along those lines. Um, I haven't used it for that myself. Uh, I use it for uh, little projects where you need a uh, multi-core cable and it, it seems to work fine. So this one doesn't have a, a shield that runs around the outside to uh, try and keep any uh, unwanted signals from the cables. Um, but you can get various types of uh, Cat5, Cat6, um, I think there's a Cat6E as well but I'm not, I'm not really too sure about that one. Uh, but yeah, it's a handy cable. Uh, then we've got a single core power cable. Uh, handle a, a couple of amps quite safely and obviously uh, you can get different colours as you see this one's green I've got uh, orange, red, black uh, I think that's it for them colours um, but yeah you can get uh, different different colours different thicknesses uh, single core but these generally tend to be uh, multi-core because it's uh, very uh, very pliable uh, then we've got uh, this met well they're all metal but uh, it's an enameled uh, wire which is uh, it's called enameled magnet wire I believe uh, they use it in uh, transformers um, I'm using this at the minute for an aerial that's connected to uh, my AT long wire ATU outside you've just got to be uh, careful when you use this for uh, electrical purposes uh, it's actually got a coating on the outside that will stop the uh, stop the electricity passing through so you've got to scratch that off uh, good pair of scissors um, which is quite hard and it just uh, it's quite hard to see even uh, even just your eyes so uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera to be honest um, but yeah many uses for that uh, making coils uh, using it for a an antenna dipole or a long wire it's very hard to see when it's uh, five or six meters up in the air um, if you've got it pulled uh, tight enough it's quite hard to see which is uh, good for a distance or a concealed concealed antenna then we've got a bell wire I don't know if you can see that one it's, uh, it's actually two two wires uh, bonded together in the middle now that one's just pure white and that one's got a tracer so you can tell uh, what wires what without having to run your finger down it all the way like that uh, very easy to uh, pull apart, it's a pair of scissors in between just make a tiny little cut and then you should be able to just pull it apart, there you go uh, not designed for high voltages um, possibly maybe 30 volts maybe maximum uh, safely and uh, not very good high current rating either, it's a uh, very small cable as you can see there. Uh, Multi-core cable. Uh, this one's actually got a, a shield, unlike the unlike the Cat5 doesn't have a shield around it. So you can just uh, peel that back and it's actually got a, an inner plastic sheet, sheet as well. In there. I'm not really sure how many core this is. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. 11 core cable and uh, one of them is not actually a cable it's just uh, it's a piece of rubber uh, to help stop you uh, pulling the cable too far uh, or just give it a bit of stability I think uh, good for uh, switches which have got a lot of inputs or outputs or, uh, I don't know connecting various things over a long distance and just using one cable uh, extending your microphone cable possibly uh, or a, a data cable for your radio something along those lines um, and then we come to the uh, a high current cable it's a power cable you can use can be used for antennas as you can see it's got a, a massive uh, massive amount of uh, little little tiny wires that all bunch together to uh, make one one cable just twist it up that will handle the quite a few amps quite safely as well uh, it's got a, a very good thick sheath 
just uh, the blue bit on the outside there help protect the cable. So uh, that, there's just some uh, some of the cables that you can you can find, uh, and there's there's all sorts of different types as well. But these are the ones that I, I just uh, happen to have uh, lying around in the uh, in the shed out there. Um, I'll just uh, just quickly move on to uh, a different type of connector.